Hey everyone, this week's podcast is about staying sane during busy times. These are the practices I use to stay calm and not get stressed out and overwhelmed. Now, this could sound like another podcast about productivity, but really the essence of it is about what I do to stay calm and that pays off in any stressful time. It's useful. It makes you a better mother. It makes you a better friend, a better partner. It makes you, you know, have better health outcomes. We all know that stress is terrible for our health. So I really think that the practices I describe in this podcast are useful for you no matter what is going on in your life. So I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Parenting Successful Teens, the podcast that cuts through the overwhelm and stress of this phase and offers parents simple, practical, cognitive, science-based strategies for keeping their teens on track. Join master coach and real-life mom, Allie Irwin, to talk about real teens, real problems, and the skills it takes to raise successful adults. Hey, I got a great question today from my friend Krista, and... I thought I would share my answer with you as well. Krista asked me what my favorite tips are for staying sane during crazy times. (laughs) And I laugh because I think a lot of us feel like all the times are crazy times. Like we keep waiting for things to settle down and that's just not a thing that's happening. I want to offer a couple of suggestions today. And I want to start by saying that nothing works, none of the tricks or hacks work, unless you have the big pieces in place first, okay? So all of those like staying sane, quick tips, there's nothing wrong with them, but they don't really stick unless you have these big pieces in place first, like you do them and you feel better for 30 seconds and then you go right back to being stressed. So I'm going to start out with the big pieces and I hope you will consider starting out with the big pieces as well. So the first thing, the first big piece for me is a clear set of priorities. If you don't know what's important or if you are believing that everything is important, then (laughs) of course you're going to feel overwhelmed and crazy all the time, right? Because there's just always more things to do than we are ever going to get done in a day, no matter how organized we are, no matter what planner we buy at the start of the year, no matter how we set up our entranceway, like none of that is going to work if we believe that everything is important. So having a really clear set of priorities that you can keep comparing the item that feels like it needs to be done in the moment, you can keep comparing that to your highest priorities. And then that will tell you if that's what you should be doing next. As I'm recording this, one of the thoughts that I had is, oh, I should just get my breakfast dishes done before I go record my podcast. That feels like, oh, it'll just take a few minutes and it'll be so much better, you know, when I go into eat lunch, like if all the breakfast stuff is cleaned up. Like my story, my head spins a story about getting that done, but it's not my highest priority for the day. My highest priority after I finish this podcast is I have this big stack of papers on my desk to just get through. Like each piece of paper represents a client I have to bill or an appointment I have to make or an idea I have to file. And so my big picture priority for today, the thing that if I get done, I'll be really happy with at the end of the day is getting, getting my podcast recorded and getting through that stack of papers. So all the other things... I'm going to have to keep dropping all the other things that crowd in that say, you know, oh, just do this. It'll only take a few minutes. I'm going to just keep comparing that to my highest priority. I'm going to let those thoughts come in my mind and then compare and then let those thoughts go right out of my mind. Okay, the second big piece that I think is really important is so much self-kindness. Because it is work to stay trained on your big picture priorities. 
it takes mental effort to keep focusing on the things that are important to you and letting the rest go. Okay, it's work (laughs) to say no to the other things that feel like they would be easier to do or more immediately satisfying or the things that other people, you know, other people have different priorities for you than you do. You know, your maybe your kids want you to just real quick do this one thing and your husband or your partner wants you to just do this thing real quick or your mother-in-law or the school, you know, has been sending you all these emails and they all are pressing on you. It takes work to almost put a, you know, kind of a fence around your biggest priorities and focus on those. And in order to do that, in order to endure your own judgment, you know, about my dirty dishes or the unanswered school emails, you need a strong self-kindness practice. In fact, <laughs> you're, you're going to need a self-kindness practice about your self-kindness practice because you'll catch yourself judging yourself like, oh, why did I get sucked into that? And you're going to have to be kind. And then, you know, it. you're going to have to be kind about the fact that you weren't kind to yourself and you did all these other things first. And so that that conditioning, women are conditioned to put other people's priorities first. That conditioning goes all the way down. And so to prioritize the things that you think are important and to to say not no forever, but no, you know, while you focus on the things that you need to get done, you need a strong self-kindness practice. You need to, basically, you need to have your own back, okay? So if people are complaining at you, you're not also piling onto yourself. You want to have your own back. So the third big picture item is to stay connected to your own inner compass. And that's important because your inner compass is going to be what tells you what to do next. I know that you've already set sort of your high priority items for the day or the week or the month or the project you're working on. But in the moment, you're also going to be checking in with your inner compass to see whether to keep going or which one to do next. And it's a little bit hard to describe until you get the hang of it. But in some ways, it's kind of like that kid's game, you know, warmer, colder. If I go to pay my bills and I get a strong, colder feeling, even if that was my plan for the day, if the bills aren't immediately due, I will put that off and notice which task feels warmer. And it's just, it's a lot less stressful way to operate. And oftentimes I find out later, like there's a reason why I did things in the order I did them in. And this reason kind of escapes logic, like I couldn't have foreseen it at the time. But then later I found out there was a specific reason why I needed to create that space to do something else. So those are the three, for me, big picture items. Know your priorities, have a strong self-kindness practice so that you have your own back and what you're choosing, and then to stay connected to your inner compass, which tells you kind of what order to do them in and what to do next. And I just want to throw out a caveat in here. (laughs) Sometimes what that inner compass is telling you is some type of physical activity, some type of physical need that you need to get taken care of before you dive into your next priority. Staying connected to your inner compass oftentimes tells you really simple things like you're hungry or you need a glass of water or you need to go to the bathroom. And It sounds silly, but we are so trained out of staying connected to ourselves that when I've done these exercises with clients on calls and and like we check in with our inner compass, oftentimes the first thing they notice is a physical need, like they need to grab a sweater and they didn't even realize that they were cold 
or they need to go to the bathroom. Like I've had clients literally leave in the middle of a call, run to the bathroom and come back because they're so not connected with what they need in that moment that they literally didn't realize that they had those needs. So if you are strongly connected, you'll take better care of yourself. And that better care of yourself makes it easier to stay sane during the busy times. Okay. And that's different than, you know, having a strong self-care practice, which we all should have, and which I admit I'm kind of shaky about when I'm really busy. So checking in with my body, um, staying connected to that inner compass is sort of the way I stay in partnership with myself during busy times. Okay. For me, it's a lot more practical than scheduling massages and bubble baths and pedicures and all of that. Because those little hits I get will oftentimes be like, go outside for a walk. And I just need, you know, to walk to the corner and back. And I've hit a reset button and I'm good to go again. Okay. But you only get that information that those simple, clear directions when you're checking in with yourself. So this brings me to the two tips that I gave my friend once she gets these three big picture items in place. And those two tricks are energy practices. And if you've been following me for a while, I don't talk a ton about energy work. So this may be a surprise to you. I found it to be amazingly helpful and amazingly fast in terms of helping myself stay calm and stay centered and not be too stressed out. So the two energy practices I'm going to describe to you, if you have any questions about what these look like, what I want you to do is I want you to join No BS Mom Help on Facebook. In that group, I will have posted the video version of this. And then, you know, you can watch that video and you can see what they look like. So uh, hopefully my directions will be clear, but you are welcome to join No BS Mom Help anyway, because that's a great thing to do. The first energy practice is called a hookup. And I actually learned this from my physical therapist. So what you do is you put one finger in the middle of your forehead where people describe having the third eye, if you're familiar with that terminology. So one finger is in the third eye and the other finger is in your belly button. And what I want you to do is to just really lightly pull up, really lightly and gently, just pull up on both of those. And you just hold those two spots, maybe for 30 seconds. But what you're actually looking for is a feeling of their system settling down. For me, it feels like, um, like a, ah, like a big exhale. So you just, just hold those two points (laughs) until you get that, that relaxation feeling in your body. And um, if you don't immediately get that sensation, just hold it for like 30 seconds. Because the more you do it, the, the more regularly you do it, the more your system knows what's happening and it makes it easier to access it more quickly. And it works amazingly for me. So give it a try and let me know how it goes. The other thing that I do that also helps me that's, you know, kind of an energy practice is called bilateral stimulation. And what that is, is anything that you're doing across the center line of your body, like from left side to right side. And I have seen this done a whole variety of ways. Uh, Yoga with Adrienne does it where she kind of swings She has her arms loose and at her side and like turns to the right until her right, um, her left hand hits her right hip and then turns, you know, swings to the left until her right hand hits her left hip and just kind of goes back and forth. That's one way to do it. Some people will tap their opposite shoulders with their arms. You know, you take your right hand and tap your left shoulder 
and vice versa. That's another way to do it. Again, there's science behind it. This podcast is probably already too long for me to go into it, but it's definitely helps me calm down. And, um, you know, it's non-drug, non-fattening, doesn't take very much time. And I even add singing to it or humming because when you hum or sing what you're doing again is stimulating your vagus nerve which helps you calm down so i will be tapping the opposite shoulder um you know if i'm maybe on a walk or i'm home by myself so i don't look too silly and i'll sing while i'm doing that and again it just calms me right down and Taking action when you're busy and overwhelmed, taking action from that calm place is so much more productive than just always being hyped up and stressed out. So doing these simple energy practices that take less than five minutes, you know, the one takes like 30 seconds and then the other one takes a little bit longer, that pays you back over and over throughout the day because you're just so much more productive when you're feeling calm. And I want you all to not be too stressed out. So give these both a try. And if you have any questions, like I said, you can go to No BS Mom Help. The video is posted there. Or um, I guess if you're not on Facebook, maybe I will get around to posting it to YouTube. (laughs) We'll see. Um, If I do, it'll have the same name as the podcast. So that's what I have for you this week. I hope you all are doing well. As always, if you have any questions or you would like some personal one-on-one attention in putting these things into practice, you can reach me at Allie at AllieIrwin.com. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.